The images I've given you come from the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, which is a US government agency and thus produces public domain content that we can freely reuse. They're all in here in this content directory. And once they're copied into your project, Xcode will automatically build them into your finished app so you can access them. Behind the scenes, an iOS app is actually a directory containing lots of files. The binary itself, that's the compiled version of your code ready to run. All the media assets your app uses, any visual layout files you have, plus a variety of other things like metadata and security entitlements. These app directories are called bundles and they have the file extension .app. Because our media files are loose inside the folder, we can ask the system to tell us all the files that are in there, then pull out the ones we want. You may have noticed the images all start with the name NSSL, short for National Severe Storms Laboratory. So our task is simple. List all the files in our apps directory and pull out the ones that start with NSSL. For now, we'll load that list and just print it to Xcode's built-in log viewer but soon we'll make them appear in our app. So, step one, open viewcontroller.swift. A view controller is best thought of as being one screen of information, and for us, that's just one big blank screen. Viewcontroller.swift is responsible for showing that blank screen, and right now it won't contain much code. In fact, you usually just see this kind of code here. This contains a handful of interesting things I want to discuss before moving on. It starts with import UI kit, which means this file will reference the iOS user interface toolkit. Then we have our main class, view controller, which inherits from UI view controller, which is Apple's default screen type. It's empty and white until we change it. This line here, override func view did load, starts a new method, and it's overriding the default viewed load method from the parent class, UI view controller, ready for us to customize however we want. Plus, of course, all these braces, these curly brackets, form the code blocks. We have our work. Here's the class, and here is that code inside the method. And inside viewed load is one real line of code, super.viewed load, which tells the system to call Apple's UI view controller to run its code before I run mine. And you'll see this used a lot. We'll come back to this code a lot in future projects. Don't worry if it's all a bit hazy right now. So this viewed load method is called when the screen has loaded and is ready for you to customize. Everything between the opening brace and the closing brace that follows a few lines later is part of that method and will get called when you start customizing the screen. We're gonna put some more code into that method to load the NSSL images. So we're gonna add some code beneath the line that says super.viewedLoad. We'll say, let fm equals file manager dot default. Let path equals bundle dot main dot resource path, exclamation mark. Let items equals try exclamation mark fm dot contents of directory at path, path. I'll hide this bar on the right so we can see more of the screen. Then we'll have a loop for item in items. If item dot has prefix NSSL, this is a picture to load. Then end those braces. Now some experienced developers we'll see these kinds of things like try exclamation mark or an exclamation mark after the resource path and start writing me an angry email. If you're considering doing just that, please continue listening to what I'm gonna say first. That's a big chunk of code, all of which is new. So let's walk through what it does line by line. First, the line let fm equals file manager default declares a constant called fm and assigns it the value returned by file manager.default. This is a built-in system type that lets us work with the file system, and in our case, we'll be using it to look for files. The next line, let path equals bundle.main.resourcePath, declares a new constant called path that sets the resource path of our app's bundle. Remember, a bundle is a directory containing our compiled program and all our assets. So this line says, 
tell me where I can find all those images I added to my app. Then we make a new constant called items that's set to the contents of the directory at a path. Well, which path? The one that was returned from the line before. As you can see, Apple's long method names really does make their code quite self-descriptive. The items array will be a constant collection of the names of all the files found in the resource directory of our app. Then we start a loop going over all the items that was found in the directory. We check if it has the prefix nssl. And if it does, we will run some code here where this comment saying, this is a picture to load. Has prefix will return true if the file name in question starts with nssl, which all our JPEGs do. Now my code here uses two exclamation marks, which at this point in your Swift career, you should realize is potentially dangerous. However, in this case, they are both completely safe and help make our code easier to read. This first one is necessary because our bundle might not have a resource path because some app bundles, not iOS app bundles, some other app bundles don't have resource paths. However, for our main bundle, there must always be a resource path. It's optional because other types might not need it, but iOS absolutely always has to have one, so we can definitely force unwrap that. As for this try exclamation mark, we're saying try to read the contents of our resource path. This might fail. If it fails, it will crash We're using a force try here. But if we cannot read the contents of our app bundle, something is fundamentally broken in our application. And this should never, ever, ever, ever happen. It can't ever happen. If we can't read the app bundle, this whole app won't work. So try exclamation mark is perfectly justified here. Now the three constants we've made, FM, path, and items, will all be destroyed as soon as view to load finishes. What we want to do is attach data to the whole view controller type so it'll exist for as long as our screen exists. In Swift, this is done using a property. We can give view controller as many of these as we want, then read and write them as often as needed while the screen exists. To create a property, you need to declare it outside of methods, up here. We've been creating constants so far, but this array is going to be changed inside our loop, so we need to make it variable. We also need to tell Swift exactly what kind of data it will hold. In our case, that's an array of strings, where each item will be the name of one NSSL picture. So we'll say var pictures equals an array of strings. So it's variable now, because it's gonna be changed inside our loop. So down here, our, constant, uh, our comment is, we found a picture to load. At this point, we want to append our item to the pictures array. And that's it. Annoyingly, after all that work, our app won't appear to do anything when you press play. You'll still see the same white screen as before. Did it work or did things just silently fail? To find out, add this line of code at the end of view did load, just before the closing brace. Print pictures. This tells Swift to print the contents of pictures to the Xcode debug console. And we run the program now, we should see some text in the bottom right of the Xcode window with the names of all our pictures, NSSL 0049, 0046, 41, and so forth. Now I should say that iOS often likes to print lots of uninteresting debug messages into the Xcode debug console. Don't fret, if you see lots of other text in there you don't recognize, just scroll around until you see the NSSL pictures, and if you see that, you're good to go.